Hey Colorado Mountain Club, Pat here with our Youth Education Program. I am here to talk to you a little bit today about one of my favorite pieces of backpacking equipment, which is the MSR Whisper Light Stove. Uh, before you get on me too much, yes, we're in my basement. I will be lighting a stove during this demo. Um, I would not suggest doing this at home unless you're very comfortable with this piece of equipment and maybe you have the fire extinguisher handy, which, which I have both. So. Um, yeah, so I like to just talk about the stove because I feel like it gets a lot of flack in the outdoor industry. A lot of people have kind of wrote this stove off. I believe it's been around since the early 90s, and I can't tell you how many times I find these stoves almost looking brand new at gear sales, CMC gear sales, REI garage sales, uh, and most likely it's just because people haven't really done any annual upkeep on this stove. Uh, to keep it working well. And the upkeep is pretty minimal. So I won't be talking on every single part about this stove, but what I would like to show you is mainly how to clear carbon out of the fuel line and clear the shaker needle, which I'll be talking a little bit more about here. Um, but those are the main two things that go wrong with this stove to allow for insufficient fuel flow, um, insufficient flame, and really that's the main reason why people write this thing off. So let's just dive into it. So a couple parts, the parts that I'm gonna be talking about here are one is the uh, fuel cup. So the first thing you wanna do when doing any service on this is take the fuel cup off. So easy peasy. The next thing would be to remove the fuel line. Now you're gonna to wanna to do this without removing any of these legs because I can attest that once you get those legs off, it is doable to put them back on, but it can be a pain in the butt. So. Um, now we're just going to try to remove this fuel line without disturbing those legs. Easy enough. Kind of snake it through one of the legs there. And then before I start working on that fuel line, I want to take that fuel cup and put it right back on and make sure that those legs are staying in place. All right, we'll set that to the side. So you heard me talk earlier about a couple things there, the fuel line and then the shaker jet. So this, a lot of people call this stove just the shaker jet stove, um, whisper light stove. It is a shaker jet stove. And the reason is because there's a little needle that you can actually shake and that needle allows for the fuel flow to go through a little teeny hole, um, which supplies the fuel to your stove. So. The first thing that I want to do is just make sure that that's working correctly and you can do it by shaking it. Shake your needle, you can shake it. So I'm going to shake it. I'm getting a little bit of a noise, meaning that that needle is moving around in there and hopefully clearing any carbon that is in our fuel hole, all right? Um, so that all sounds good. I do want to take that needle off though. I have a little tool here. You can get this from MSR. Otherwise, it looks like you could use like a wrench or um, anything really to get that off. This tool does come in handy though. Nice to have, especially if you're in the backcountry. So, um, but what I'm going to do here is just pop off this little needle. There we go. And then I want to make sure that I got a good spot for this. Is our needle and we can actually take that needle and just to double check to make sure that we have no buildup carbon buildup is I'm gonna, from the other end I'm gonna make sure that I clear that hole you should be able to see a little bit of sun through it no sun today but I'm getting a little bit of my light we're good to go now I want to put that back in and make sure I put that into the side I'm putting it right on my bag there Great. Now the next thing we're going to look at, I'm feeling good about that needle, but we need to look at this fuel line, all right? So there is a cable that lives in this fuel line, and you can actually use this cable to scour some of the carbon buildup um, from inside of your fuel line. So again, this little tool here, it's got a few holes on it, and I can take that, find the right one that fits your cable, and I can just remove that cable, just like that. There we go. You can actually see some of the carbon that's built up on it to begin with, but you can use this cable to kind of scour the inside of this thing and really make sure that we're clearing the inside of that fuel line. We get the best flow of fuel that we can. We spend about 
10, 15 seconds, really moving it back and forth, kind of like a pipe cleaner almost. Feeling good about that. Now I'm going to take this cable and set that to the side as well. I'm going to put it right on top of my bag, put that tool right on top of my bag. Not so hard to lose it here in the basement, but I can assure you all these small things when you're outside, uh, they look like any other rock or anything else that you have sitting around you. So you definitely want to make sure that you're keeping all these parts. Uh, but now I have an empty fuel line. I've got no needle. I've got no cable in there. And what I'm going to do is try to get all that carbon and just clear this fuel line. So I've got a pressurized bottle here. We did about 20, 25 pumps on that. And I'm gonna attach this as normal to my bottle. And then just make sure you have a nice like, receptacle, something, a cup, anything really, because we're gonna run a little bit of fuel through this to make sure that we're, we're flowing. A little bit too much fuel, but it is good. We're good to go there. Shake it off. Let's put that to the side, away from our lighting area. Detach from our bottle. And now we just need to put it all back together. You will have a little fuel in there as well when you detach, so you want to make sure you get that. I spilled a little bit, but all right. Now we're just putting it back together in reverse. I'm going to throw that cable in. I'm going to leave just as it was. I've got a little bit sticking out the end there, and that's okay. We want to put that needle back in. Get it nice tight. That fuel cut back off. And this is always the tricky part, so pardon me while I fumble to get this through. We're feeding that back through one of its legs there. Back into its face. Go nice. And then I'm going to put that fuel cup right back on it. All right, so there we are. I've cleaned it, I've put it back together. Now we are ready to test this stove out. So, lighting, that always tends to be a problem as well. I teach a lot of kids how to use this stove. Um, it can be a little bit scary. You can get the, the burst of flame, right? But if you know how to light this stove correctly, it's not that scary. our windscreen right for when we're cooking. I'm just going to kind of block off my, my pump there. All right, so when we're lighting this stove, all you really need to do is get the smallest amount of fuel in your fuel cup. So maybe you can come closer here. All I'm doing is I'm going to turn on my fuel. I'd say about three seconds, or if you're good, you can actually listen. I'd say about the second that you hear the fuel going is when you want to shut it off. I just heard it there. Maybe you heard it in the video. Now I'm shutting that fuel all the way off. If you look down in your fuel cup, I do have a little bit of residual fuel in there that I just released, and I'm going to just light that. You should have a little flame. 
The trick to getting this going would be to only light it once. So what's happening right now is this liquid fuel in the fuel line is going through and this flame right here is heating it up in this coil to turn it into a vapor before we can actually cook on it or, or have a, a flame to cook on. So I'm watching that flame pretty closely because the second it either goes crazy, I need to put this fire out or hopefully it's just going to start to slowly go out um, but it will be heating up. There we go. It's not too crazy, but it is going to start to go out. And when it does, I need to be ready to give it some more fuel. What happens here? All right, there we are. Whisper light stove working beautifully. As this heats up even more, I'll, I'll lose a little of that yellow flame that you're seeing there, and you'll just have a nice blue white gas flame. But in my opinion, don't fix what's not broken. This stove is amazing. You might have a couple, there are a couple different varieties. You know, this one just burns the white gas. They make the universal, which burns gasoline. Um, you know, any other fuel you might encounter. Um, but really the maintenance is the same on all these. Uh, it's pretty, they're pretty, they're pretty easy. So uh, yeah, that's the Whisper Light stove. Thanks for tuning in. All right.